Hi, I'm Quinn with Cisco Developer Relations, and we just had a really amazing uh, data center networking takeover. And I've been l lucky enough to have been joined by, by Thomas and, and Yusuf. So if you guys wouldn't mind introducing yourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thomas Scheiber, I'm responsible for the Nexus product management. And I'm Yusuf Fan. I'm responsible for the technical marketing function for the data center product. So with the, the takeover, you guys had an amazing breadth of, of information that was covered. I, it was almost too much for 45 minutes. I, my mind was spinning. But from a developer standpoint, which is how I always look at these yeah. kinds of things, um, I'd like to get, well, first of all, your take on, on Nexus Dashboard and Nexus Cloud, two really amazing products. But how do you see our infrastructure developers and our infrastructure automation engineers changing the way that they manage their networks using those products? Yeah, let me, let me start and maybe chime in. I mean, first, Nexus Dashboard, Nexus Cloud. What we basically did is saying, hey, uh, we have a tremendous amount of work done on the APIs on the Nexus switches itself, but the customers come to us and saying, hey, this is good, I want to work with that, but I also want to have automation tools that Cisco supports uh, that basically do controller function, monitoring function, that sit on top and basically work across multiple switches, fabrics. So what we did is that set of tools, we put them under the brand, and product name Nexus Dashboard is something you're gonna deploy as a piece of software on-prem, in your location, on top of an appliance, virtual appliance, or you can use it as a SaaS service, which is Nexus Cloud. So that's the way to think about it. Nexus Dashboard, Nexus Cloud are these set of operations tools to manage fabrics, monitor fabrics. So now the question is the developer, this is cool, what does the developer do with that? The answer is the same what we do on the switches. We put all the APIs there, we put no spawn APIs on these tools. Because clearly, most of our customers are saying, hey, I have some help you manage your fabric instead of individual switches, but I now need to integrate this into workflows with other infrastructure, and that were the no spawn APIs I got for, the abstraction layers that we built into these tools. So that's probably a way I think about it, but you know, no, you're, you're, you're much closer to reality. No, no, you're absolutely right. I think as I mentioned also during the takeover, is that we are an API first company and an API first product line, right? So we want to make sure that we have a very robust and a powerful and an open REST API available on our platforms, right? And we're very well documented also. Uh, and thanks to the partnership we have with the DevNet guys, right? I mean, because that helps us quite a bit in making sure that our documentation and API is consistently clean um, and easy to consume, right? So now, what, what we have done in the products such as Nexus Dashboard and Nexus Cloud is automate, provide a lot of out-of-box automation. We automate a lot of everyday task, but then there are tons of other things that a customer might want to do and enable some custom workflows, and that is where the API comes into picture, right? So that is number one, and number two also is that if somebody wants to integrate with some additional tools, then the API is also very important, right? And we have done some integrations, like for example, we are driving integrations with Cisco tools, we are driving integration with third-party tools, but if customer wants to develop some custom integrations, then they can use those APIs and then uh, develop those. No, that's great. I mean, I, I kind of joke that sometimes the, the code that gets created, whether it's through DevNet or something else, kind of almost acts as like glue between products. You have these different integration points, but having those APIs there really enable that to happen. So it's great to hear that, that you're leading with that in, in a product set because, at, like I said, as a developer, that's kind of the, the, the bread, bread and butter what we do with the infrastructure. I, I do want to pivot a little bit because, you know, from, from you know, take it from the completely out of box to uh, the Nexus Code uh, project that, that was talked about there and was released. Like, I, I mean, that is, as someone who's worked with infrastructure as code for a number of years, like, the Nexus Code project is really cool to me, but what, what drove the, the uh, creation and, and op even open sourcing of that uh, to, the, to the general public for free? Start there? No, absolutely. So I think the primary um, motivation was how we can make it simple for customers to adopt automation. Because we certainly believe that you can get the best use out of our infrastructure if we can adopt automation, right? And given that customer has, Cisco has such a big uh, variety of the customers. I mean, we have customers on each end of the spectrum, customers who are like all DevOps, right? And customers who are classic, CLI. CLI driven customers, right? And how do we help those customers get on the automation bandwagon? Because, I mean, in the EBC, it was a very common theme that, look, yes, we understand the value of automation, but we don't have the skill set, we don't have the team who can do it, or we don't have the time, right? Which is all the same thing. So how do we create abstractions, and how do we make it simple for customers to consume our infrastructure and help them automate it? And that's why it comes in, and that's why we are like doing a lot of things to 
up level it, right? I mean, we obviously create a lot of providers on the ground level, but then how do we can take those providers and create them into modules? How do we can create like, our best practices design guide and convert them to those playbooks on the Ansible side and modules on the, on the Terraform side? So that is basically lowering the barrier to entry to data center orchestration, that is the prime motivation. Yeah, I, I mean, that's pretty much captures. I mean, if you look at this, the, the real challenge and advantage, I guess, is we have this whole range of expertise on operations team, what they're trying to do. So there's really the traditional, as you just said, CLI, and then there's the other one, nothing but an API, and it can be very elaborate. And so what we're trying to help with Nexus's code is really honing in on some of these abstraction that we think based on how we would recommend to deploy infrastructure. And what we see customers telling us, what is the right abstraction layer to make it as simple as possible, right? As you might imagine, there's no really good straight answer. <laughs> a lot of this is just a feedback circle uh, that, that we that we want to quite frankly engage on. What we do know is if we just do a you know, plain vanilla uh, Ansible Playbox or a Terraform provider, you know, for some that is very intuitive that have used this another piece of music. For some it's not. And so what we what we're doing with Nexus Code is trying to find a middle ground on, on, on these abstraction layers that make sense. Uh, and it's really to use this point. I mean the, the key piece here is really helping customers move towards an automation approach. Because what we don't want is we don't want them to be hesitant, stuck, I don't want to touch it, because that is what really in the end slows you down as a, as a company and doesn't get you where you need to be from a, from a business perspective. Yeah, no, and, and I mean, it's a common theme of, of how do I get started, where do I get started, I've been yeah. hearing those through all of my sessions as well. So I'm glad that, that that's being addressed and, and, and it really makes it a lot easier and consumable. Uh, the, the one thing I do want to touch on, and, and it's something that I've uh, played with a little bit, and talk about speed of, of adoption, being able to move the business faster. Um, one of the things that, that also caught my eye during the presentation was this concept of application derivative change. It, it, it almost feels like we're giving control of the network to our applications teams because we're scaling at, at, at the speed of them. And I know that would drive uh, uh, traditional infrastructure people absolutely crazy because the, they don't want to regain or lose control of the network. But um, what's been the adoption and, and reaction from the community about something like that? I, was there been a lot of hesitance or was there a, a wide scale like hurrah that we're finally getting that we need to move the infrastructure faster on prem? Well, let me, let me take a cut on that and then go in. It's like, I actually see, that used to be probably what you just alluded to, who controls what. I think that's where we were probably more like four or five years ago. And, and part of what I'm saying is, is clearly there is, you want to have control over the process, right? You can't chase everything every minute. Uh, and so there are going to be approval cycles, that's normal process, but I think that's also true in a pure application, cloud-based deployment mode, right? I don't think that's that different. What, what I do see is we, we see two insertion points for these automation approaches. One is clearly the infrastructure team, the network team in our case, exposing their infrastructure as a service, as an API. So the, the users of the infrastructure can do some of their configuration without waiting for the, for the infrastructure team. They just make it an API call. So that's, I think, one, one aspect. And you know, you're not going to allow everything to be configured. You're not going to allow the app team to reboot your switch or re-image your switch. But you can control some of these things. You don't want to be in the middle and want to be the, the, the block for them to move forward, right? So that's one aspect. This is like the more, I call the, the application-centric kind of view. Uh, there is another piece that the network team itself has no choice than to automate and drive. And it's just all API driven, right? Because if you look at this, even if it's not necessarily application, then it's just, hey, I need to bring up a new segment. I need to add a new switch or port to a segment that exists from a, from a zoning segmentation perspective or, hey, somebody decided to fire up a new VNet uh, in one of these clouds and I need to map it back to a, to a, to a zone from a security perspective. Right, so that is actually more like the network team would typically do this. You don't even wait for the app team, because the network team owns this, but instead of having like weeks to, you know, I need to open a ticket, I need to get it done, and I wait and I hope it test. That's why I think the other loop is, is the network team itself actually using way more automation going forward to accelerate, as well as the thing which is very important, if you do automate this, you automatically have compliance tracking, because you do actually use, <laughs> A process now, you can track what you did, so you actually know what happened. So I see this actually as a positive thing, and we get this feedback to back to your question. 
there's clearly the application, this is great, my networking team finally gets it, but there's also the networking team actually uses this as a very, very helpful thing to actually drive what they need to do in terms of automation. So that's that's my take, but you know, again, no, you you're absolutely right. Look, when we started, the even in the takeover session, right, and as an application-driven change, but then we generalized it that, look, this concept is applicable to any change, any data, stored yeah. in any database. And the demo that we showed was basically not an application, but it was a tool that is called Netbox, and basically it's an open source um, infrastructure inventory tool, right? And we developed this demo based on, because two of our largest enterprise customers asked for that integration, right? And yeah. they are using it that way because they are using like uh, a Netbox for uh, configuration management. And it is controlled by the networking team, not by the application team. Yeah. So they want to automate certain tasks because instead of creating any time they add a new endpoint, new segment, right, or new VLAN, instead of like creating a manual ticket now to configure the infrastructure, it can automatically be configured any time, right? So, so that is the idea that we are listening to the change, right, and then we are triggering the change for the networking infrastructure and it gets done automatically. Right? So while the concept is very interesting, and it was, in fact, I heard it for the first time back in 2017 when Tom Edsel, who is a fellow at Cisco, he described it as a self-healing network, right? And that is the idea, and I'm sure we're going to eventually get there, but I think the real uh, short-term application is, is within the networking team also, right? So yep. we can use that change in that database and then we can drive the change. No, that's great, and, it, I, you, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's not just about the, the applications, but it's about networking teams moving uh, much quicker. Well, Yusuf Thomas, I really appreciate your time and, and, and willing to sit down and have this interview and talk to our developers about some of the, the new innovations and yeah. in APIs, so I really appreciate that. I would also encourage all of our, our developer audience to, to go to developer.cisco.com. We have uh, labs on application derivative change. Uh, the documentation and everything for, for Nexus Code is hosted there, cisco.com slash go slash Nexus Code, which redirects to the DevRel, uh, DevNet website, and um, yeah, and make sure to catch Thomas and Yusuf's uh, the replay of, of your session because there was a ton that we didn't have time to cover today. Hey, thanks, Quinn, and yeah, please keep the suggestions coming. Yeah, no, and thank you for the partnership with the DevNet, right? Yeah. I mean, we really could not have achieved what we achieved on the automation front without this partnership. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks.